Good morning and welcome to the Rip Curl Pro Bells Beach and the 55th edition of this amazing event at the one of the most iconic right-handers in the world in the second stop of the Samsung Galaxy Championship Tour. Welcome to Dawn Patrol as we come here early Thursday morning. You can always count on a beautiful sunrise and we're checking those early conditions as the Round four is set up for the men and women to see who will ring the bell. Coming up on the show, the world's best give back to the locals here in Torquay. The Maliola Foundation taking the kids out surfing with cystic fibrosis to help them out. We'll talk about that story. We'll talk about the swell on tap for the next couple of days of the waiting period. And we'll also break down the modern day surfers on how to really perform radically on the Bells Bowl. That's all coming up. Joe Turpel alongside a couple of legends of the sport, former world champ Martin Potter. Morning, Potts. Good morning, Joe. Strider, Raspberry, Wazalewski, legend at Pipe Waz. and all around the world. How are you doing, Strides? I'm good. You say that so well. <laughs> <laughs> well, we think about all the amazing performances you guys have had in your career. World titles, big barrels at Pipe. Strider, but you probably remember what that felt like to ride your first couple of waves ever, which carried you on to an amazing career. Most definitely. You know, there's nothing like that feeling you get. You just rise up above. You get only a surfer knowing the feeling, and then it just carries through the rest of your, your life, really. I mean, you continue that, right, Potts? Uh, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's that buzz that um, <clears throat> you get from that, just that sliding feeling, just gliding through the water and getting pushed along by a wave is is something that you never forget and once you start you just can't stop. Well you've that feeling that makes you just feel so good to ride waves all of a sudden you've realized this healing power yep. that the ocean really has and the boys from the Maliola Foundation guys like Jason Magalenis and Hans Hagen teamed up with the world's best surfers to give back to the community. Check this out. This is the Maliola Foundation's first ever Surf Experience Day in Torquay. We're here with some of the WSL athletes helping spread awareness and most importantly give some kids some uh, natural therapy. We've got nice little three foot waves out there. You guys are going to have a lot of fun today. Mariola Foundation is all about putting smiles on kids' faces, giving back what we've been freely given from the ocean and riding waves. With their disease, there's so much like rules and regulations and so many struggles, so it's good to just take them for a surf and just have an awesome day. You've got some fantastic coaches here and all the pros are going to come down later and say hello. It's just amazing that they do this for the kids and how exciting for them to surf with pro surfers and I think it's a really good way to get them enthusiastic about surfing and being in the beach and being in the salt water. We all remember the first time we surfed and having fun with my friends and and like try to push your limits and stuff and I want the kid to stand up and like actually like to remember that day for maybe the rest of his life. To see the smile on their face and the joy and it takes me back to when my dad was shoving me in on the whitewash when I was like six and seven years old so it's epic. Being professional surfers it's all about winning and he's got so much drive and passion it's it's nice to be reminded of how it started for us and the simple pleasure of catching a wave and the joy that that can bring. It's great to meet these new families and, and see those smiles on the faces, it's priceless. It makes me really appreciate what I have. Just to see the smile on her face and to know that she's being healed is, is uh, truly amazing. What an epic day that just went down right here in Torquay. You can check out mauliola.org to see how you can get involved. If you want to be a member, if you want to donate money or your time to all the free surf sessions that go on. Mauliola means breath of life. And you can really see the life that was passed on from the world's best. These guys are in the heat of competition. And then they just probably rode some of their most memorable waves of their life just the other day, Potts. Yeah, no, Nathan Hedge hit it on the head there just saying, you know, it's, it's something that we're given freely as a, as a surfer just to be able to paddle out. And to give that back to those kids, knowing that it's doing them good, it's just, uh, it gives me goosebumps. Yeah, they, they actually, they, had a, they came up with a theory of a saltwater inhaler, and they're like, wow, okay. And they took that, and they were like, wait a minute, why don't they just go surfing? Yeah. And it's helped them so much. They're, they're just, you know, their lifespans are expanding, and it's just so great to see something so wonderful and feel so good be so healthy for you. You also yeah. see the personalities of the tour, loving giving back. What an epic crew we have on the top 34. Coming up next on the Dawn Patrol Show, we'll dive into the Surfline forecast to see if we'll get underway today, tomorrow, the next day. We'll find out after this.
Bells Beach. To me, what makes it amazing is that it reminds me a lot of home. The whole vastness and how the elements all um, seem to show up every time. Just take a look around, big cliffs, consistent swell, and, and I think that's why we appreciate it that much. You feel more close to nature and then... Yeah, I feel like it's more raw as opposed to artificial and busy, you know? I think I like the, the, hand. the hand mounts and the map is pretty cool for surfing because it's easier because you can manage to have your arm to do your turn that you want and stuff. I was telling Joanne yesterday that I think I've been here six or seven times and I still have no idea how this way breaks. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> it is a surprise and a challenge every time I battle out. Faye and Bianca Betendog for giving us their version of the GoPro break breakdown. Bianca still in this event. She could be in the first seat around four if we do get underway. And Joanne DeFay already into the quarterfinals. It's been really fun, Potts, uh, seeing that little friendly rivalry really push themselves in the top 17 big time. Friendly, yes, uh, but uh, that's the, you know, an amazing rivalry right there. I mean, they've, they've competed against each other so much. And if you want to do that, just go and stay with someone. You know, be, be, befriend them, and all of a sudden you've got them in every single heat. Yeah, it's tough. It can't be easy, you know, having to go up against each other. But they always give each other a hug in the end, and, you know, they're cool. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, once they're in the water, head down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. More, yeah. more matchups, hopefully. One thing they did touch on is that maybe they don't have it quite figured out yet, that we have changes every day of the waiting period. As we look back, we've had a little bit different story for waves every single day we've run competition, which brings us to the Surfline forecast. We're getting down to crunch time, maybe a couple of days left in the waiting period. Potts, what are you liking out of this forecast the next couple of days? Uh, I'm just liking the way it's, it's approaching us. I mean, nice and slow, that ground swell is gonna build. You know, it's, uh, it's looking better and better through the weekend. So. You know, there was going to be uh, questionable winds, but uh, I think that's going to change. You can see that second storm fetch right there. But, you know, just uh, we're in for a good weekend of surf. You know, I think we've got two days of competition left with three days of swell to uh, really maximize um, the, the good parts of the day. Strider, look at that purple blob. Oh, God, it just heats up. And then that turns almost gray down there, which is a great sign as the swell punches into us over the weekend. You know, this the swell coming in strong and then the wind really kind of switching back around after, you know, to come favorable for us. Hopefully we actually see that wind stay strong offshore. Right now we have a beautiful little offshore flow happening right there. You can see the way those little comets are flying. That's the wind direction. So it's an offshore flow here, which is just beautiful conditions out back. You know, the surf today looks like it just kind of stays nice and clean, two to four foot. Who knows? I mean, we could get some heats underway. It looks super clean out the back. And then as we go through this rest of the weekend, look at that Sunday spike. I mean, it is beautiful. Comes up Saturday into Sunday. And, um, you know, the wind's back and forth a little bit on Saturday, but could be really good on Sunday. We could just finish this thing out with some 8 to 10 foot surf. Great to check out the maps there. And it's really clean looking today. But as you can see, it's getting bigger and bigger over the next couple of days as we're still waiting for that official call. But knowing that it could spike and get actually really solid, does that make your favorites change for a big win at Bells Beach? We have Fan and Carissa still coming in as the defending event champions, starting with you, Strider. Who are you going to be your event favorites if it's solid 10 feet out here at Bells? Oh, John John. Or Kev. Oh, wait a second. Oh, Those guys are gone. They're gone. <laughs> oh, no. All of our, all of you know everybody's favorites. A lot of the favorites are gone. But hey, you know what? The guys are in the draw. Wilco, Fanning, Wiggly, Dantes. You got Connor Coffin. Come on, it, this is going to be so exciting if the waves are pumping. Martin, what about Jordy Smith? Um, you know Mason Ho, yeah. just oh. to throw a spanner in the works right there as well. Mason. Michelle Berez, it's the best I've seen him compete here at Bell's Beach. Yeah. He's on his best result so far, and I think he's he's finally worked it out. You know, it's you, that, that spot where you need to experience. Well, thanks. Well, on the women's side, I'm just thinking Courtney Conlog. That just changes everything. If it's solid, she is going to be so excited to go surf. Yep. And I think Tyler Wright, those two, they're on the oh. same side Ooh. of the draw. Oh. So I think whoever, whoever wins, wins that? on that side would could, could go on to victory. You if went it's definitive, solid and then you went 
kind of waver. Well, I have went with my first pick, <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting how swell can really change your favorites yep. here at the Bells Bowl. Speaking of the Bells Bowl, we're going to have Ronnie Blakey and Ross Williams break down how to get super radical with big carves here in the modern day surfing on an old school lake. We'll be right back. We are still waiting to find out whether we're going to get heats underway today. But before we do get to the call, some very exciting things to break down here. Two of the highest scoring surfers from the third round, Mick Fanning and Connor Coffin. They have a different approach to this wave, Ross. Mick Fanning, a variety of manoeuvres, a great amount of speed. He's looked really sharp and on track for a fifth Bells win here. I mean, if you had to pick two guys to pick apart technique, uh, this is a pretty darn good pick. With Mick and Connor, they've been on fire. And Mick Fanning, he actually caught us breaking down his approach to this wave this morning, and we were able to pick his brain for a bit more insight. What did he have to say? Well, yeah, you know what was really interesting? He said, first of all, let's take a look at aggressive Mick. This is uh, Eugene, if you will, right there, blasting the fins free. Um, but we all always have, uh, you know, so much admiration for how fast Mick Fanning's going. After all, his nickname is White Lightning, and, uh, you know, it's not by accident. And something he said to both of us, Ronnie, was, well, I really pay attention to my bottom turn. In fact, I'm aggressive at my bottom turn. You know, a lot of people will get to the bottom of the wave, and, of course, we all know how Bells is tricky, uh, and you have to have good timing. But for him, he kind of forecasts the section that he wants to hit off the top, and once he sees it, he'll really be aggressive and rip into that bottom turn so he has excess speed on the top of the wave. And so that's kind of the keys to success for Mick and why he's so fast and efficient running. It's interesting, isn't it? Because we do see a lot of people hanging on their bottom turn for a long time here, particularly on the backhand, I think, when you, you look at surfers in the past. But Mick Fanning definitely attacks that bottom turn. He says it actually opens up the variety of maneuvers he can go for, the options that he has once he arrives at the top of the wave. And that's we've exactly, seen that already. That's exactly right. And, you know, speed allows you to do whatever you want. And, you know, in surfing, if you can be going fast, that's what's fun. And that's why in the past people have done whip-ins and towing with skis because, you know, when you're hauling on a wave and going as fast as you want, it's just uh, so much fun. And it, that's why watching McFanning is it's amazing. He just It looks like he's doing whatever he wants. Well, Mick Fanning also has been coming to this wave since he was in his early teens, so just has a, an innate knowledge of where the sections are going to pop up, and it's the advantage that he has over the rest of the field and why he is definitely going to be a threat in this contest. Connor Coffin, on the other hand, still learning this wave, but the thing that Connor has working for him is some of the biggest turns that we've seen in the event so far. They're helping him fetch big numbers and get important heat wins. Now, this is actually really cool to break up 
apart these two surfers because Mick Fanning has this amazing ability to have that torque between his upper and lower body where he gets speed out of his turns. But you can really see the influence from Dane Reynolds uh, to Connor Coffin. And so I think his raw energy, his just aggression, when he gets into a section, he basically kind of gets into that really tight crunch. You can tell he's using obviously a lot of his, his legs. That's where his power comes from, strictly his trunk but uh, he is beyond aggressive. He just goes into it with uh, abandon. Here's what I love about Connor Coffin. We've been watching a lot of these veterans for such a long, long time. We do know what Mick is gonna do. When Connor matched up with Joel Parkinson, you're seeing that surfing that you've seen for such a long time. Connor has that point break flow yeah. here at Bells, but he also has this element of unpredictability and he keeps using that to get himself through these really close heats. And he has been one of the big scorers uh, with individual turns so far on the CT this year. Well, you talk about flow, that's the other thing. You know, you pick apart these guys' styles, there's technique. Uh, you know, for Connor Coffin, again, he's got that really low, squatty stance, which makes him super powerful. But, uh, you know, as we've said in the past, working on his heats, he makes it look good. Uh, and that's the cool thing. You know, he doesn't have that really 90 degree angle, sharp edges that makes it look, you know, kind of ugly. Uh, so I like the fact that Connor is a power surfer, but he makes it look good. Um, and then the other thing that both of these guys, Mick Fanning and Connor Coffrey have is the perfect timing. They know when to pick apart these section at Bells. It's so hard to do. I'll tell you what else they have in common. They're going to be surfing against one another in a round four heat. Also in the mix in that matchup is Jordy Smith. So that is set to be one of the classic battles at Bells. If we've got some decent swell in the lineup, it's a really hard event, to, uh, hard heat to pick a winner in. It really is, and you know it's. So we talked about timing for that that clip right there. You can notice that Connor bottom turned mid face. So a lot of times, you know, we we talk about how bottom turns. You have to draw this big, heavy, deep bottom turn at, at bells. It's not really the case. You just have to match your speed with the section. Well, that uh, has been fun breaking down the forehand approach of Mick Fanny and Connor Coffin. Later on in the event window, we're going to be having a look at the backhand surfers. Just quickly, we want to send a special shout out to Brett Connellan going through some tough times at the moment on behalf of the entire WSL team. We're thinking about you, and we'll be back right after the break to get the call and find out if we're going to get heats underway. Stay with us.
listening to the great sounds of White Denim. Their new album is out called Stiff. You should check it out. That movie, uh, that song right there called Mirrored in Reverse. Something that a lot of us do when you're not a goofy foot and you want to watch Aki surf in the mirror just to see what it would be like to be regular foot. Did you guys ever do that? Don't break up a good thing, man. <laughs> do not <laughs> gotta relate. that man in reverse. No. <laughs> no. no. It wouldn't be Aki if he was natural foot. Well, right, but I just wanted to compare. Well, anyways, <laughs> one of the best goofies of all time won this thing back in 1998. Yep. When you think about the all-star performances, we've talked about favorites to win with this swell really increasing. But what about standout performers? Uh, Strider, who's coming to mind from the early rounds of competition? Well, obviously, Mick Fanning. We've seen some magic from him, some speed. But I'm really liking... <clears throat> Connor and Caffles. These guys, the young rookie no class. Fears. Well, no obviously, we like Wilco's magic in the lift. <laughs> it's going to get big, though, and I don't know if he's going to be able to take that what about next level. What about Italo? Okay, okay, okay. I like, okay. It. I like it this morning. Potts, who are you going with? Um, <clears throat> I like Kyra Belly and David Cathals, two, two grommets that have really stepped up and, and took down some big names. Uh, yeah, I reckon they stand out for me. Looking forward to them. Also, Tyler Wright still on top of the Jeep leaderboard as she's in this contest in round four, which we might see get underway. Let's get the official call now with Rosie Hodge and our Deputy Commissioner, Jesse Miley Dyer. Thank you, Joey, and good morning. And Jesse, we've had two lay days. We are all chomping at the bit to see. Um, action get underway what's going to happen today yeah you know we've woken up this morning and the conditions are really beautiful um, you know that offshore wind really helps uh, smooth everything out and there are some small waves we're going to put the women's on hold and actually do another call at 9 30 at winky pop which uh, you know could be really interesting for the girls all right let's get diverse and obviously the surfers have had those two days like I mentioned to rest up what's the consensus with them you know are they ready to go um, yeah, you know, it's hard really early in the morning. I was talking to a few of the women um, that are in, still in the event in the car park, but, you know, when you're there really early in the dark, it can be a bit tricky. So, you know, I told them that there's a good possibility we're going to go on hold and we can only, you know, double check and see how it looks in a little bit. I like it. Let's make the most of our opportunities. Back up to you, Joe. Thank you very much, Rosie. And our commissioner, Jesse Miley Dyer, former tour competitor, was dominant on her backhand at venues like this at Bells, but now taking advantage of all the options. We have the Bells Bowl, but Winky Pop has been a favorite for the world's best. Any chance we get, we try to run there when possible. What's that like, though, Potts, for competition? How much does that change the game, moving to the different venue down the beach? I think it's just a little bit more high performance. Obviously, you know, Winky Pop uh, is a little bit more predictable. So it's going to be good. I mean, it's, uh, we're looking down there at the moment, and it looks fun. It's clean. As our tide starts drawing out, I think we're going to see some, uh, you know, if we get underway, we're going to see some action, that's for sure. As we check out the aerial from the sky, you can see Bell's Bowl right there. It just wraps around center side. You see those stacks of the horizon. Then you just shift down the beach around that button. You saw people finishing long waves on the big day right before you see those rocks. And then Winky Pop sets up a speedy little right. But Strider, it's a much different transition as we check out the best conditions for this venue. Yeah, you know what? The reef down there is longer. You saw the, the Bell's Bowl. You can see all the chunks in the reef. And then down there, you got a nice, big, flat piece of beautiful reef where the wave actually sweeps along it really nicely. So it actually creates a more, uh, like you said, predictable section. And yep. you know what's coming, which is something that you know makes life a lot easier as a pro surfer to go down the line and just smash away. Is that going to change with the Goofies and the Naturals? Do you reckon that your picks are still be the same? It's going to change. <laughs> <laughs> a great venue to have on option here at the Rip Curl Pro Bells Beach. The next call will be at 9.30, which is about an hour from now. For the best women in the world, Bianca Batendog, Alessa Quizon in that all-goofy foot matchup. It's interesting because they don't always know when they have to be prepared for that venue. The thing is, I saw both of them out in the lineup at Winky Pop just in case. Thinking about all the options at Bells, it's got to be one of the toughest venues to compete at. First thing this morning, Carissa Moore was going to Winky. Sorry, right off the bat, in the dark. Good news there for Carissa yep. Moore, as obviously she's going for her fourth straight Bells Beach title. Wow. The one to beat as she's trying to get her yellow jersey back. Do you think her chances to win are just as solid if it was on the Bells Bowl? Uh, absolutely, but you know, Sally Fitzgibbon's in the same bracket, and she may get Steph if she wins that heat, so it's, there's a lot of factors. Well, lots to talk about. We'll be back at 9.30 for the WSL Update. See you then. This copyrighted event broadcast is produced by the World Surf League for broadcast around the world and may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the written consent of the World Surf League.